Okay, I'm just going to show you how to use the Arc 125 software. Uh, once you've installed it, obviously Google, I can't remember the exact website where I got it from, get it from their official website, but anyway, Arc 125, once you've installed it, you'll have a desktop icon. Double click on that to open it up. And this is in order to put frequencies into a Uniden UBC 125 uh, handheld scanner. Um, right, okay, the software's opened up and it looks like this. Um, ugh, it's just saying that there's a new version available. I'm not going to get that now. Anyway, it shows you the banks you've got on your scanner. You've got 10 banks which hold 50, I believe, let me just maximize that. Yeah, 50 frequencies per channel. So amazingly, you can put 500 frequencies in. So, because I've already got a whole load saved, I'm just going to show you how to put in one new one. But uh, what you do is you go to open up the. See, I'm moving the mouse up to top right, uh, top left. Click on open, and then let me just. Okay, then the next thing that opens up there, it goes to my documents and then my scanner data files. That's where the folder where it saved my frequencies. Okay, so you click on that, and then you see it's it's selected in where it says file name. And then you click on open. And there you go. And then it loads up the frequencies you've previ previously saved. So you can see I've got. Milden Hall, there's loads of frequencies for Milden Hall. You'll find that most airports you go to, you're going to have one or two dozen at least. Cambridge, I've got Stansted, Lake and Heath. Um, that's just the first 50. So then click on Bank 2. And again, it carries on all these Lake and Heath frequencies. Look at that, it's, there's so many you need just for one airbase if you want to try and pick up as much of as what's going on as possible. London Heathrow, and of course you haven't got enough room to write London Heathrow Airports British Airways, so you have to abbreviate things. LHR stands for London Heathrow to me, so abbreviate things. You'll work out how many how many letters you've got. Anyway, so Heathrow's second bank, third bank again. Heathrow, I've got Woodbridge, Watersham. These Watersham ones don't seem to work. They just kind of you get this annoying noise whenever they are detected. They're they're not right. Um, the Mac Loop, in case I ever do the Mac Loop in Wales, Manchester, Duxford, so Bank 4, I'm up to Duxford, I've got frequencies that are commonly used for air displays, uh, the Thunderbirds for when they come over to Fairfords, I've been told they use those frequencies, Coningsby, React, if you go to the React Air Show in July, there's all those ones you need, blah blah blah. blah. Bank 5, where are we? Again, more React. Fairford, if you go to Fairford to see the B2s that are over there at the moment. You also need Bryce Norton because um, Bryce Norton control the airspace around Fairford quite a lot of time. B52 frequencies, blah, 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 blah. So you can see I've used up 238 frequencies and I've only had this scanner for a couple of months. It's my first ever scanner. So anyway, let's say you've now found out a new frequency you want to put in, uh, which I have, I hope. Hopefully it's not one I've already done. No, I can see I've already got that. 270.05, someone gave me the other day, saying that's Swan Swanwick. I've got it written down as Fairford. Um, 370.25 is a frequency someone gave me. Possibly for Mildenhall. So I'm going to try that. So what you do, what you do, find a blank space. So number 239 is going to be blank for me. So click on it to select it. Then use your keyboard to type in 370.25. Okay, that's there. And then you go on to the next box. And uh, you'll see it adds another zero. You don't have to add all the zeros. If, if someone tells you 370.25, just type that in and this will automatically add any other eight zeros. Um, so then you go along to the next column which is the alpha tag and that just means how you name it um, oh God, I hope this is right but I'm going to put Mildenhall so again just type on the keyboard Mildenhall uh, I'm going to put I oh, 
hope. <laughs> Mildred Hall, I hope. I'm not sure about that. Um, anyway, next column is mode. Again, click on it, and it gives you the options up there. Do you want it to be auto, AM, FM, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what some of these other ones are. I just keep everything on auto. So I presume it means the scanner is automatically scanning for how that frequency is being transmitted. So click on auto. See where I've just selected that button? And now auto selected in that column. Um, PL, DPL, I don't fill in. I was told you don't need to. Delay time. Uh, it just means if you want, if anything's broadcasting on that frequency, you want to hear it immediately. Um, so click on that column for delay time. And up there it gives you the options. When do you want it to come in? I'll just select either zero or a plus of a few seconds. Uh, I'll just keep it on zero. Lockout, you don't need to do. That just means if you do want to keep a channel locked out, you don't want it to come through, you can select that. And priority. Uh, let's just see what happens if I click on the priority column. Yeah, you can you can select a frequency if you want it to be ahead of any other frequency you've got coming in. You could select on for that if you wanted, but I'll leave that blank. So anyway, now you've typed in a new frequency, you've named it, you've selected the mode as auto, you've selected the delay time as zero. Now what you need to do is save that. So click on save. Let's see what happens. All right, down the bottom left, it'll say finish saving when it's done that. Obviously, it'll take longer if you've typed in more frequencies. And I would never, never type in more than, say, 20 frequencies at a time without saving. Just in case your computer crashes, all that time you spent writing all these things, you may as well save it after about every 20. Because um, you never know if you're using Windows, can be you might get the blue screen of death at any time. So... Anyway, so now you've saved it, next thing you need to do is you need to get this information into your scanner. So what you have to do is get the USB cable that was provided with your scanner. And I think it's best to, I stick a little piece of paper that's written on C unit and charger. So I know don't get cables confused. I've got so many different things lying around desks and so many cables for everything. And that's the other end of it like that. So... So you put the candle there down so I can do this. Open up the flap on the side of the unit then. Ugh, those little rubber straps are a bit annoying. And plug one end of the USB cable in there. Okay. And obviously the other USB ends into your computer. Ooh, have to take something out. So I've got space. And I Try to keep using the same USB port on your computer. If you, if I, instead of keep using, instead of using that one, I went and used that one. For some reason, this can confuse this um, Arc 125 software and it has difficulty detecting a scanner. So try to keep the same one whenever you do it. So, plugged in. Right. Front of your unit then will now say charging. Now, you do have to turn your scanner on in order to put the frequencies folder um, file into it. So, press it on, hold it down for a couple of seconds. Right, it's now on. I'm just going to turn the volume down on it so that um, in case the channel comes in while I'm doing this, it'll be... Oh. So let me... Right, let's drop the sound level. Okay, so, next. So you save the file, um, where are we, alright next, at the top right it says send, click on send, let's wait for this window to pop up, these should all automatically be ticked, all, it's, all of your banks it's ready to go and have a look through, um, USB port, this is where it can sometimes, I've had a few problems with this, yeah. There you go. Scanners just come on. Right. So anyway, um, this is why I said try to keep using the same USB port on your computer. For some reason, this software sometimes doesn't detect the scanner when you first try to do this. So tick auto detect scanner if it's not there, which means it'll look through all your USB ports to try and find your scanner. Anyway, and then click on center scanner. 
fingers crossed it'll work. Ah, you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Scanner not detected. Check cable and or driver. <laughs> Setting to driver is a little bit of software that controls how your computer talks to the Unidem. Make sure the scanner is connected and powered on. Yes, you just see me do that. Double click status to open to Right, I'm going to click on OK. So, I'm going to try again. There we go. See, look, now it's working the second time. So, if it doesn't work the first time, try it a second time. Try, try three or four times. If that doesn't work, what I usually do is I turn the scanner off turn it back on and try again and usually you'll end up getting it to work. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that today because it's, it's a bit complicated trying to do the other methods to, to take your scan. So as you can see it's sending all the channels in all the banks that I've got into my scanner. Right once that disappears that means it's done so validate OK shows down the bottom that's now done and then um, I've already saved that I'll just double check I'm just going to save it again let's just see what happens okay it says finish saving down there so that's saved so now if I want to you can click on the top right and just close the software and that's it you've now updated your scanner uh, with the latest frequencies you just typed in that's how to use the ARC 125 software. It costs about hundred, uh, cost about twenty five pounds, I believe. I paid. Uh, also, in case you wondered, you can get these leather cases with a plastic front that holds the Uniden scanner on eBay, I believe. I think I paid about twenty pounds, about nineteen ninety nine, including postage, which is a lot just for a tiny piece of leather like that. But it's useful because it's got a little hook on the side, and as I said, you can buy these little carabiner things like that so that you can hook it onto your tripod which and these again you can even get these from Poundland you can get a pack of these really cheap so get some of those you got a way to hook the scanner onto your tripod or whatever uh, now I'm done with that I can switch my scanner off and then you can just leave it charging through the USB port if you want there you go that's how to use it um, so get the ARC125 software Give it a go and leave me a comment on the video if you've got any questions. Right, thanks for watching. Bye bye.